In today's episode, we're gonna show you how to properly mine QRL. Michael Strike and our team is gonna smoothly walk you through the setup, step-by-step -step configurations. He's gonna put down a few important notes so that you don't hit any roadblocks or hiccups along the way. And by the end of this episode, you're gonna be up and running and mining QRL. Let's dive in and show you exactly how it works. Welcome, crypto and quantum enthusiasts. Ryan, thanks for that quick intro. Uh, as you know, we're going to go over uh, how to properly mine uh, the quantum resistant ledger, or QRL, on RandomX. So we're going to walk you through step by step. We're going to do a little bit of system tuning. Uh, we're going to um, show you the different tools, and we're going to do some of the explanations, and we'll have a little bit of fun along the way, hopefully. We'll see. All right. So uh, we did a video back here in April. It's a little bit outdated, uh, so it's about a year old now. Uh, so let's start going over the basics. If you want to skip ahead, we're going to index this out. I hate long, personally, I just hate long technical explanation videos if I can't zoom in at, or if I can't just jump to the pieces that I want to see. So look at the index. We'll break this out into sections so that it is uh, uh, as value add as possible. So first off, okay, first off, what is random X? So we'll make that the first section here. So random X is the proof of work protocol uh, that uh, QRL uses. Uh, Monero came out with it just over a year ago um, and we use it as well. Um, the whole reason behind the whole reason behind random X was to get away from the ASICs and the uh, uh, the GPUs and just get back to CPU mining kind of gets back to uh, Satoshi's um, one CPU one miner kind of mantra is kind of how it originally started uh, but uh, as you know GPUs and ASICs have uh, you know it, it, that's always been a, it's been a constant battle between uh, for miners for those could afford the specialized hardware being the ASICs or those that could afford the expensive 600 to a thousand US dollar GPUs or those with a CPU so in order to get consensus more distributed and not prefer those who may have a little bit more capital to invest in mining I think that the, this is the biggest reason why uh, random X was chosen and uh, it's been working quite well so far um, so with that being said some requirements so for CPU mining uh, what the most important thing is going to be is the number of threads that you have and the frequency of those threads. Uh, but in addition to that, RAM speed is going to be, I would say that's secondarily important to the number of threads and, and the frequency. Uh, if you can get above uh, 21, 33 megahertz uh, for your RAM, which is actually the default DDR4 spec, uh, you will find pretty very, very good gains. Uh, regarding that, if you can get to at least 4133, 2133 is basically the, the baseline default. Anything above 2133 is basically considered a overclock. Um, but it, the manufacturer specifically put out RAM that runs faster than 2133, and then they certify it. So it might be an overclock on the spec, but the manufacturer tests it and makes sure that it works. Those settings will all be made in your BIOS, so you have to fi find your specific BIOS manual and make sure you tune it to 2166 or 3200 or 4133. Uh, and uh, most mo most of the modern BIOS BIOSes can actually pull the RAM information from your RAM and tune it for you. Uh, you may have to tell at which speed, but that that's about it. Um, okay, so let's see. Also, huge pages is going to be a big uh, is going to be a big gain. We'll show you how to do that. We're going to use XM Rig as our miner. Uh, huge pages. You, it, I mean, if you're looking at this, it's like 50%. I can I can verify that. It's 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 pretty uh, substantial. Um, also, if you want a, if you want to tune this, if this is strictly a mining PC, you want you, you can disable hardware prefetching. Uh, that's an, that's another BIOS setting. What that is is uh, uh, CPUs will try and guess the answers to the next instructions, and the 
based on this is random x the instruction sets are it is pretty it, the instruction calls to the cpu within random x the proof of work protocol are very randomized so hardware prefetching uh becomes more of a uh, uh just more of a performance liability than it does under normal you know under normal programs uh than a, than a value add so you can disable that um and regarding cores, we will actually show you how to, uh, and I'll show you how to, in XM Reg, how to disable cores so you can actually use your machine instead of keeping it redlined all the time. So, all right, a few notes. Um, I'm not going to go into detail in overclocking. Uh, it's a little bit out of scope for this, but I'm going to point you in the right direction. Uh, so first off, um, if you're going to do, if you're going to, do over if you're going to do any overclocking or try try to uh, you know change your frequency that you know uh, apply different voltages to the number of the different CCX cores. Uh, first off, make sure you go through get the latest BIOS uh, for your PC. This I think this is always usually good advice. So, some will say some will say that you don't flash your BIOS unless you need to. I like to stay current. Uh, that's just my own personal preference. Um, also, if you have an AMD card. AMD card now supports AMD cards with the latest uh, BIOS updates now support a uh, SAM function technology and what that is is it increases the bandwidth between your CPU and your memory and it gives you a performance gain now this is probably less relevant for uh, GPU mining but some people just like to turn their GPU on just to get the most hash rate and they're uh, you know they don't care about the electricity cost or live in a low cost low electricity area so and they already have the graphics card so maybe that makes sense to do that uh but you know run the late i i think run the latest bios just be careful when you apply it obviously um get the latest drivers um go on to whether or not you're amd or nvidia um the that will change the settings that you config in the config.json uh, file for XM rig. We'll go over that. Um, AMD's a AMD's a really good. Honestly, AMD's just a really good value. Uh, I I used Intel for a long time, but AMD's really picking up speed and they've really got a lot of market share because they've been driving value add uh, return in respective to both just, not just cost but also performance. So um, uh, the uh, the uh, the the RX 6800 is one is the We'll show you a little bit of performance, what you can get on that, and um, you know, run the latest drivers. If you want to do some overclocking, you want to keep it easy. This is the easiest way to do this, is Dragon Center. You can download this in your BIOS. You know, none of this is tech. You know, none of this overclocking is technical advice. These are observations that I've made. Set your set your defaults for your CPU in your BIOS. Run Dragon Center and you can see up here it allows you, there's different uh, performance profiles, you can do extreme performance. It'll take care of, it'll take care of tweaking the frequency and the voltages of your uh, CPU for you without you having to have any advanced knowledge of overclocking. If you wanted to do a little bit more in-depth, get a little bit more specific because all CPUs are not created equal some can be run faster than others. You can download this utility called Clock Tuner, which is very popular among the AMD community. It was written by one Isthmus. I think I'm pronouncing that right, correctly. He's a, a Russian developer, uh, very talented as far as getting into really the the uh, into the weeds on as far as uh, CPUs and memory. So. Um, you can use this. This will uh, help you find the maximum settings for your CPU if you were inclined to do so. If you do, if you run through and you do overclock your CPU and do any of that, it's always good to do a memory stress test. So this is the utility I've used in the past. Um, it will stress test your CPU. If you are using the Dragon one, the Dragon, the Dragon. Uh, overclocker only boots only comes into effect after you boot into your operating system for Windows so that probably won't affect this because this is a bootable flash drive 
and it won't be testing the settings from MSI Dragon because you're not booted into the OS, you're booted into their you know, proprietary BIOS. I forgot what it was. So that's about Random X. That's about how to go about uh, tuning your system. Uh, for performance, uh, you need, uh, the, for performance reasons, the frequency of the CPUs, the number of the cores, and the, and the uh, DDR speed for your memory, those are probably the top three components uh, that give you that will give you the greatest returns on mining with random x so without further ado let's go to the next section all right so let's go over uh, how to install the miner and also how to <laughs> actually make it run so first off um, XM rig is a is a good uh, mining uh, application I've used it since Genesis on QRL um, so back then, you know, back then the the, the proof of work consensus mechanism was uh, Kryptonite V2. So what you want to do is just come down here. You go to this address, you know, go to this URL up here, and we're going to take the GCC release of that. Now Chrome actually blocks this. So what you'll probably want to do is open up uh, Microsoft Microsoft uh, Edge. Go back in here, copy and paste that, and we'll go in here, and we will try to re-download it again because that's automatically blocked by Chrome. All right. So here's the other thing. You can see. You can see the uh, right up in here. We have to extract this file. This is RAR Labs that I have running here. Um, but before we even extract it, we really have to check our antivirus software. So if you need to, if you need to do that, we'll go here and I'm going to give you a few things that you're probably going to need to do. Now I'm running Norton 360. Here's a few things. Antivirus. Wherever you download this to, you're going to have to uh, set an exclusion for that area because everything in, everything in Semantic Norton is... Uh, is that's a mining software is considered to be a uh, risk so it will pick up on the signatures of that and it will just automatically delete it so if you go to configure and you can see that you I'm gonna put I have I have downloads put in there um, I also I also once in a while dabble in a little, little bit of uh, nice hashing or you know nice hash mining so uh, make sure you go into downloads if that's where you're going to download it to, and then you can actually uh, extract it. So we'll extract that in a moment. The other one of the other things you're going to need to do is go into your firewall, and you're going to have to trust certain devices. Now I picked this. This is just a random uh, um, pool that we're going to mine to because that's what I had. I picked it randomly. I had to pick something to be able to show us how to do this. Um, and what you have to do is add them into the device trust because the antivirus software will actually do packet inspection on the way out. Even if the program is on your PC, it will inspect the traffic. It recognizes the signature of crypto traffic quite easily. So you need to trust the device so that it knows that that's allowed. If you do, if you trust the device, make sure you do this IPS exclu exclusion. Um, that what it stands for intrusion protection system it's part it's IDS IPS intrusion protection system um, you need to check that as well now there was a bug up until about two weeks ago up until around April 1st in which you would check this and you would click OK and it would not stay checked as far as I can tell that bug has been fixed so you should be able to do the, to do that now um, you also need to go under program control and if your app gets blocked under here you'll have to set it to this has a tendency to sometimes block go, end up here so you'll want to go make sure you uh, allow it here um, another thing is there is there is some intermittent problems with the intrusion and browser protection for Norton antivirus even if you have the IPS selected, like we were talking in the firewall earlier, uh, sometimes even having sometimes that's not even good enough. Um, 
you can try turning this off. It's not a recommended security. It's not a recommended security session because that's what's analyzing uh, packet signatures as they come in to make sure that your your miner isn't compromised. Um, but you may have to experiment with this a little bit. I, I've had mixed results. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, all right, so I'm just going to turn that off just for the time being. Uh, I don't recommend that as a um, I don't recommend that as a permanent setting. All right, so we have our XM rig here. Let's do this. We're just going to extract it. Go in here, go under here, and here is our XM rig software. So 6.11.2, that's the latest version as of right now. So now that we've covered how to uh, download it and how to prepare it for uh, uh, anti your antivirus software, Next step is let's get into configuring it. All right, so we've got our XM rig here. What you're gonna want to do is first thing, let's take a look at this config.json file. All right, so we'll go over here and I'm gonna explain the different, I'll explain them, I'll explain the relevant sections in here. Okay, so we're gonna be mining, uh, we're gonna be mining random X. These are all the default settings. Um, you're definitely going to want your CPU enable is true, and you're going to want huge page support as being true. Uh, those, that's, those are the two most important settings. If you want to run your video card, uh, you would change. All you would do would be change, change this to true, just like that, and that would run your AMD video card. If you have a NVIDIA video card, it runs the CUDA PUDA protocol, you would change that to true. If you had both, you might change both to, like I said, oops, like I said in an earlier, uh, earlier in the video though, graphics GPU mining is not efficient on random X. So what you want to do is scroll down here, and this is all, right here is all of the important information that you're going to need to be put in. So we're going to walk through putting in uh, the, the, specifically what you need to do for, uh, for random X and how to configure that. And I've got this on my other screen over here, so I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. Okay, so for algo, you're gonna wanna do RX. Actually, I'll just copy this. All right, for algo, you're gonna wanna, it's gonna equal that. Coin stays as null. URL, as I mentioned before, we're gonna use uh, mining ocean and you can actually copy these settings exactly as I have it. Wallet address, hmm, that seems strange. It seems like we need to create a temporary wallet address. So let's do that. Okay, we're gonna just create a quick wallet here. Just gonna dump in some passphrase and create a wallet. Yes, I, as you know, and as in previous videos, the next details on this page are very important. Never lose these. Do not lose this, and do not lose this. Um, if I had actually made the previous screen a, an actual password rather than just copying and pasting random screen text, I could actually save the secure wallet file, and that would be the password that I could, it would save uh, a JSON file, and I would be able to open my wallet with that JSON file. Uh, but irrespective of that, let's do, yes, of course, we didn't save it like we're supposed to, so we'll do this, phonetic phrase, and open it up. All right, here is my QRL uh, public address. So we're going to copy and paste that public address. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right in here. This is the address that I will be mining to. Password can stay as X, or you can change it to your rig name. My computer's name is, I don't know why I call it that, that's just what it is. And rig null, nice hash false, right, 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 TLS, everything else should be fine. All right, that should work, let's save that. Let's give that a test. I'm actually going to keep this file open over here, and I'll explain why in a little bit. 
When you run XMREG for the first time, run it as admin. There are compatibility issues uh, and performance issues if you don't do it this way. So run it as admin and yes. And we are mining. I can hear my CPU spinning up over there as it's heating up. Now when you're in here, you can click, click H to get a hash rate. Right here, we're getting uh, 13608 hashes per second. And I, let's see how many cores we're using. Are we using all the cores? Yeah, I don't have my, I don't have this machine tuned perfectly for this right now. Uh, to give you some performance metrics on a 13, on an AMD 3900X, you'd get about 13,000 hashes per second, which is where I'm at right now. Um, this is a 3950X. I've gotten up to 17,500 hashes, um, overclocked, every you know everything tuned in, dialed in perfectly. You can get another 4,000 hashes. Uh, so we were talking earlier. We were saying that GPU is not very effective in mining, right? Hey, let's just test that. So let's go into uh, this is our config JSON file. It's the same one that we had opened earlier. XMRig will actually allow you to make changes on the fly. So I just changed its underlying config file. And if you see here, it's on found my video cards. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's wait till it let's wait till my video cards actually spin up and do something. Okay, so you see this is an RX6800. Look look at the hash rate compared to each one of these CPU cores. For example, if I go into here, go into task manager, I'll go into performance, I'll go into CPU. You know, these are this this is each this is each core, right? Uh, 16 physical cores, 32, log 32 logical cores. Of those 32 logical cores, I'm only getting 236 hashes per second. And each one of these cores is giving me three, four. Usually if, I, if it's tuned, I can get around 450 or so. Uh, so as you can see, this is, not, uh, this is not made for GPUs, but it does work very well for CPUs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, cancel that and again that's that's for Nvidia excuse me this is for AMD if you have a Nvidia card you would change you would change that to true and you can see on here that the HM uh, XM rig automatically took my settings and make changes on the fly it doesn't it doesn't keep this file is in, in, in an open write status it just it must be monitoring that on the back end every um, you know X number of seconds uh, to check for any configuration changes. Now, one of the questions in the Discord was, how do I test to see if I'm actually mining? But how, how do I how do I know this is actually working? So let's do this. We're gonna go. We're doing mining ocean on on this particular. We'll show your mining history as soon as it comes up. Okay, so what we have here is we named our, uh, if you remember, we, rena we named our PC Big Bertha, right? We generated a new QRL uh, wallet address, and we can see that it's down here. It's, it is mining. Um, if I read the screen, it actually, the, that hash rate should be going up at some point. Okay, it will eventually get pretty close to this um, uh, between 11 and 13 uh, thousand hashes per second. So that's how you set that up uh, in, in a Windows environment. That's step by step. This is how you control if you're mining. This is how you can see if you're mining. You go go to this page, and in this interface, this GUI interface is really really close to all the uh, all the other GUI interfaces. So one other thing, if you do go into settings here, you can type in your minor IP address and then change the default from uh, 0.5 quanta for every time that it pays out to whatever you want. So that's it. If you have any other questions on mining, feel free to jump into our lively Discord community. 
uh, there is a specific random X mining section in there. We'll put the links below. Uh, until then, until our next video, happy mining.